Well, right after Donald Trump body slammed CNN, the people hit them even harder with another viral attack. A new meme is dominating the Twitter sphere this week. It promises to trigger libtards into convulsions. Previously, Donald Trump enraged the media when he tweeted out this clip. Now, if that meme triggered the liberal media into claiming that Donald Trump is endorsing violence against the press, what do you think he's going to do with this new one? Yeah, that pretty much sums up what Trump is doing to CNN, the swan technique to the head. And as of this report, that viral meme now had over 6,200 retweets and nearly 10,000 likes. Oh, but it gets better, folks. Yes, if that one, if that one didn't trigger them, this one will. Oh, yes, Donald Trump just checked CNN into the glass, but, you know, I'm not sure if that one was violent enough to trigger them. Maybe this one will. This is therapy. This is destruction. Of course, the libtards are going to freak out over these memes, but they're going to, and they're going to refuse to denounce actual mock beheadings and stabbings of Donald Trump in public, right? These are all just depictions, visual depictions, mockeries, clearly fake, okay? These are not inciting violence. These are just depictions, okay, folks? So all you liberals out there, chill out, all right? We're all laughing hysterically. CNN, though, yeah, they're crying. What are your thoughts? Comment below. Subscribe for updates. If you like what we're doing, give us a thumbs up. The Supreme Court, those are the people on the left there, just okayed a version of the travel ban. The gist, if you're from one of six countries with no connection to someone here, you can't come. It's a start. I'm okay with it. What I'm not okay with are the knee jerks who call any part of this ban bigoted. If you're shrieking that this is somehow hateful, then it's an emotional and not an intellectual response. Because on paper, it's merely a pause that allows review of processing visa applicants from lawless lands. Although the ACLU calls it a Muslim ban, which is kind of weird considering the many Muslim majority countries that are not on the list. Why conflate high-risk radicals with all Muslims? That's bigotry, ACLU, plain and simple. What's just as bad, those who criticize this pause without offering a single alternative but hugs and hashtags. It's my only question. Do you have anything better or do you just like to complain? Those are two questions. Must be great to be in the media and shoot everything down because no one's driving vans into your well-protected building. So maybe we should ask why a travel ban now? It's a reaction to inaction, the result of one party being more obsessed with Celsius than ISIS. <laughs> mm. And so this decision is just a start, just one tool in a set that's needed to fight terror. For we must keep thinking about the next bad thing, because there's always a next bad thing. A dirty bomb, a power grid attack, bioterror, stuff that could make 9-11 look small. It's no fun to think about, which is maybe why only one side thinks about it. All right, Kimberly, you're the former prosecutor here. Basically, the Supreme Court slapped down the lower courts, said, you guys suck. <laughs> well, they said, you guys went totally AWOL rogue right. off, the, off the law, which is what I think they should have done. Now, of course, they have to hear the full, you know, cases when they come in October. But nevertheless, this bodes very well for the president's executive order being able to do this, being within his constitutional authority and his preview, which we have said. And I said from the beginning about this, as did many of the other legal scholars, that in fact the courts had overstepped their bounds. They were um, considering things that were improper in terms of campaign statements, tweets, et cetera, and trying to use that and interweave it into the reasoning to say this is why it should be struck down because they were trying to get into the mindset of the president. That's not what their job 
is to do. They shouldn't be legislating from the bench. They shouldn't be an activist course, the fourth or the ninth. And I believe the Supreme Court did their job by actually being dispassionate about it, reviewing it strictly based on legal principles and constitutional authority, and came up with this, which I think really, if you look at it in terms of like forecasting what's going to happen in the fall, they're going to uphold this in so, its entirety. So, Juan, I think this reconfirms that the president has the ability to control our borders, not some judge in Hawaii. Well, I mean, so tell that to President Obama when he was trying to change immigration law in the Texas courts. I can't. Him. I don't know him. Well, okay. But I'm saying, to me, <laughs> I think this is a big win for President Trump uh, because clearly people, especially on the left, were taking delight in the fact that the courts right. were stopping him. And now you really can't say that, although it's not a complete win. As you know, it's partial. True. These people who are relatives or who are admitted to school or hired by American companies can still come in the country. But I think the key thing here, the big surprise to me, is that they acted as a group. I think it's called incurium or whatever. So the court as a whole said this is right. So what Kimberly said, that's their position. I find it surprising because I think there's a huge constitutional issue about religious rights and about discriminating against any group of people based on religious rights. But they bought into the idea that this is a national security issue. And I think that's what President Trump should have been arguing from the beginning. But now the court's saying, hey, okay, so if it's a national security issue, finish your review. You wanted 90 days, you got it. And I think they don't anticipate ever having to decide this case in the fall. Interesting. Because the time will be up already. They, we keep saying it's a victory for Trump. But what Trump said is it's a victory for national security, which is the way we should look at it, right? It's, yeah. it's like, you, it, like it's about... Our country. It's about national security. It's not about religious discrimination. And just step back big picture here. I think they called Bill Clinton the comeback kid. I think they have to give Trump this nickname too because this guy always looks like he's down. Whether it was after the conventions, whether it was, you know, after the Access Hollywood tape, um, you know, in the, the Comey memos come out, you know, the first couple travel bans get knocked down, Obamacare repeal vote gets pulled, and then he always comes back. He's like Muhammad Ali, he rope dopes these people, and then he comes back with a big election win, or he comes back with a great State of the Union address, or uh, the successful Obamacare repeal vote, and now the travel ban vote. So, um, you know, I think this is probably one of the most significant mm -hmm. victories of Trump's young presidency, and it's going to carry a lot of momentum into the summer. Um, we all know how it got here. These left-wing lawyers judge shops, they get into a circuit where you appeal it up to the ninth or the fourth, and then they, you know, rule on a tweet instead of the merit. And it's a pause, so they can get the extreme vetting procedures in place. And, you know, I think they review it in September, and I would expect that the court rules that it stands. Um, because of precedent, the 1952 Immigration and Nationality Act gives the President of the United States broad authority and discretion to regulate our immigration but system. But it also says you can't discriminate against people based on their nationality. And they're going to have to argue in front of the Supreme Court that it does not. And this is based on travel and chaos and bad people from a bad place. Well, let me just say before we let the Dana and Greg get in that the reason I think this is problematic from your description is that you have President Trump issuing this order back in, I believe, January. Then he revises it in March, right, tries to change it. Still can't get past these courts. I don't think it's political. Uh, you think that the fourth and the ninth were just act playing politics. I think people have legitimate concerns. Well, there, I believe it was political because it was all decided based on partisan ideology of the judges. Improper facts. I don't think right. that. Yes, it was. It was all based on party line votes. And I think if you want to inject. Party line votes in the in yeah. Richmond in the fourth circuit? Yeah, absolutely. Right. If you look at the breakdown, it was all party ideology. I, I and if you want to inject ideology, conservative court. Ruth Bader Ginsburg if she does the right thing, may have to recuse herself mm -hmm. from hearing this because of all the hyper-partisan things she said about the president over the last year. All right. You know, Dana, um, this can't, I mean, we can call this a big victory, but if you only do this, that's not a good thing. That, my feeling is that this is not enough. It's a false sense of security if you just stop here and say, hey, yay. You got to do more. Well, um, you know, you said that President Trump said this is a victory for national security. Um, I also think that it's a victory for institutional integrity. Mm -hmm. So the Supreme Court makes a decision and everyone goes, oh, OK, yeah. thank you for the clarity. This is what we needed. And I, I would hope that if it had gone against President Trump, that he would have said, OK, then back to the drawing board.
because there's very little trust in all of our major institutions anymore, but the Supreme Court being one of them. The other thing is that has held. Uh, the other thing I thought was interesting is that um, you have a signal from the newest uh, Supreme Court Justice, Neil Gorsuch, mm -hmm. in which he is saying, he basically would have thrown the whole thing out and said, the president has the authority to do it, and his executive orders are going to stand. That actually could be a significant precedent, not just for President Trump, but for uh, future presidents yeah. to say that, okay, well, then I believe that I have that significance. The other thing on Ruth Bader Ginsburg and whether she recuses, so, I, so I, as I understood today, and I had to be reminded, only Supreme Court justices can recuse themselves. Yeah, mm -hmm. okay. The other thing is, to... so the, uh, they, I would say that the way this looks, I wouldn't make a big deal about Ruth Bader Ginsburg um, because... If she goes their way, they'll be like, well, even Ruth Bader Ginsburg did it. Look at that. Yeah, and if she doesn't, it doesn't matter because they're, it, the majority point. opinion is going to be for the president. Yeah, so. And it's also going to be moot because at this point, the president can declare victory. He can finish his extreme vetting proposal, mm -hmm. get that policy set. And the Supreme Court has an artful dodge here, led by Supreme Court uh, Chief Justice Roberts to say, mm -hmm. we're never going to have to deal with this. So let's give the president a win. And then we're going to split this baby and not worry about it in October. But based on the law. Right. Smart. Exactly. I always Don't feel bad for that out. baby. Everybody's <laughs> trying to split a baby. Lay off the baby. Wouldn't it be great, though, if all sides competed for solutions? This is what drives me crazy about this whole topic. It's that it's, you, you put forth an idea, and then the other side says it's terrible. Where's your idea? Mm -hmm. and, you find, and you see these debates. You know, you have the, nobody, nobody from the other side, and I mean Democrats, or even progressives and liberals in general do not have any real ideas in national security, except that they don't like your idea. Yeah, That's I'm, not true. What do you mean? What do, you, do we have a two-year review for the refugees? Two years? Mm -hmm. That's not a little thing. Well, maybe. To me, it's a little thing. Okay. I just think I'm interested to see what he Nothing considers personal. more strict. <laughs> but, I mean, the fact is... Yeah. The United States and our intelligence agencies are not feckless. I mean, we, they want I just to mean stop you, bad guys from coming in. I, I'm just saying, let, let's not forget the frothing convulsion in the media and among liberals. They took to the street over the travel ban. Right. None of them have an alternative, is what I'm saying, yeah. other than yelling and screaming and, you know, soiling themselves. Anyway. Um, Greg, just yes. real quick, though, to me, really what the headline was of today was that it seemed to me that the high court was more troubled by this kind of gross display of intervention by the lower courts right. than they were by the president aggressively using his constitutional authority here because it was such an overreach and improper in terms of the means by which they decided this. So that should be a real lesson to the ninth and to the fourth and to mm -hmm. discourage forum shopping. They can chase it all the way they want to the west left coast, mm -hmm. but the law is the law and it's going to prevail and the Supreme Court's going to decide. And I'm glad that they're all there, you know, Ruth Bader Ginsburg too, because she joined in with them today. No need to single her out at all. Let it ride. You took the win. Be classy, like Dana said. Do you, there's a rumor that Justice Kennedy may be retiring. We heard that today. Mm, I doubt it. You don't think so? No. Nah. Well, if, if that happens, there's going to be riots in the streets. Because right now, the left, all they have is the courts. Yeah. They don't and have the courts. Trouble. What do you wear when you retire from the Supreme Court? Because you're already wearing a robe. It's like <laughs> a when, you, when you go, when you go home. It'd be, yeah. it'd be the you perfect wear, job start, for you. Yeah, you just start wearing you suits you at home. Shopping. <laughs> yes. Get some new clothes. Because I have a lot of black. <laughs> yes, that's all I have is black.